We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're really excited to have Co here with us tonight, and they're going to talk about the differences between tax and audit. But before we get started, please make sure you sign the sign-in sheet that's going around and get food uh, if you haven't done so already, and then make sure your phones are on silent. And I'm going to have Michael uh, introduce you first. Thank you very much, Allison. Uh, my name is Michael Gimaldo. I'm the partner in charge of recruiting Ole Miss for Pro. And uh, I've met some of you before, some of you have been in with us. We're happy to have you again today. And thanks for coming out to, to listen to the audit versus tax. Uh, Allison's team gave us a list of topics earlier in the year, and uh, I, I kind of latched on to this because I, I really like this topic. I think there's a lot of content for the folks sitting in your chairs right now that we can share with you today. And so I've invited two of our oldest alums that are in pro right now to assist with the presentation. Sherry Gia is a senior manager in tax in Nashville. And then Marianna Wright is a manager in our audit practice in Dallas. So they're going to speak with you about audit versus tax today. We want to take your questions throughout the presentation. Please interrupt. We'll save some time at the end as well. And I ask for special permission from Allison to actually show you guys two quick videos. Uh, we we to not recruit you that means we technically all recruit you guys. But, <laughs> but uh, we have one each, very short, on a day in the life of an intern or first year staff and audit, and the same thing for tax. And it may provide some context for the discussion. So that's why I wanted to share that with you. We're going to lead off with that if that's okay. <laughs> It's 7.15 and I am just leaving the gym to go meet a team at a carpool lot and then we'll drive about an hour from there to the client and we will be doing our interim procedures today. One of my favorite things um, about auditing for a public company is that there's constantly something new, something new to learn, somebody new to meet, something new to do. And I think that's one of the things I really appreciated throughout this internship is that the ever-changing environment that we're in. Another good aspect of my job, I always believe, is uh, sharing, sharing value of Pro. I feel that when I came to Pro, I didn't know that much other than the accounting aspect of it. But I now, after three years, I can say the sharing is so good here. I understand and understand so much about the accounting and the technology side. What motivates me every day to come to work is one pro policy. What that means to me is when I come to work, I don't have a problem asking anyone if I need any help. And the same goes to the, my team members when they come to work with me. If they have any issue, they come to me and we resolve it together. I am an auditor on the financial services side here at Crow. Uh, one of my favorite things about working here is the team aspect and how well most of the teams get along together and how we can hang out and do things after work as well. We don't just work together and go home. It feels like we really build a team mentality. Not an everyday day at the office. Yes. Today we're out of the client and I'm auditing inventory and we are taking a quick break to take a walk um, just to get outside and enjoy this beautiful day. I love the girl because um, we're encouraged to innovate. Um, I got involved in a, a project where we were centralizing our audit confirmations work. Uh, we realized that we could really make it efficient through technology and grow and, and our leaders um, empowers you know, us to investigate and to start developing a software application. So um, for the past couple of years I've been working with uh, software developers um, as we continue to develop our application and improve it. I definitely like working with Richard Glover because he's like, you know, everyone pretty much in the office and the trial line is super fun because we go to all these cool places with all these new friends. Okay, this week we're in Arizona. Hello. We have a client in Arizona this week, and we just landed in Phoenix. Woo! It's just after five, and we left the client, and it's a gorgeous day in West Michigan, so we stopped to get some ice cream before our hour drive back home. <laughs> Uh, 
about myself. I started with Crow a little over four years ago, started out in the tax compliance group, preparing um, corporation returns, partnership returns, individual returns, and then I moved into the tax technology group. So this is one of the things why I love Crow. I'm able to go into different departments at Crow. I don't have to stay in one role. Um, I'm continuously learning. It's about eight o'clock now. Um, I actually just pulled into the office. I wrapped up my workout. One of the great things that I like about public accounting, especially being on the tech side, being in the office so much, is that you can kind of create your own schedule. So Crow is very flexible as to you know, when you start, when you get your work done, as long as it's done. So I'm about to head into the office here and I'll check in with you guys later. So we're at a client site right now. We're implementing um, one source tax provision from a client. Hey guys, so I'm at a buddy lunch now with Mike and Mike is my uh, assigned buddy at, at Crow and so what pretty much our buddy program does is it assigns you with an you know, individual similar to your level. You can go to just for everyday questions um, and I'll catch up with you guys later. So I'm actually working from home today. I love Crow's work from anywhere policy. I'm actually working from home today as you can see behind me. A pretty decent home uh, office setup here. So I got a couple of screens going, working on those, but I actually have a dentist appointment later in the day today. But one of the things I really like about Crow is their mobility policy. When I think about it, I think that the people that I've worked with so far has been amazing. And not only that, they also recognize your efforts. For example, I actually recently got promoted to manager. I've only been here for about four years. So it tells you something, you know, if you work really hard and you show that you're a hardworking person, that they do recognize your efforts and you get promotion early. So appreciate you guys uh, kind of working through this there with a the recruiting video. It's not supposed to be recruiting, but the concepts in there are applicable public accounting jobs, right? The, the flexibility, management, scheduling, and, and and all those good things. It doesn't matter which one you have. So again, sorry about all the pro references, but I, I thought that that would be helpful to give you guys a sense of. Um, of public county in general and a day in the life of the tax. So thanks for listening to that. And ladies, it's all yours. Also, you could have bleeped out the word pro. I, well, I, I didn't decide to play that video <laughs> until 10 minutes ago. The tax group was definitely wrapping pro. Sure. Um, yeah, so Michael already introduced us, but again, I'm Mariana, uh, right? And I'm sure you um, We both went to Ole Miss, but I'm in audit. And I actually, had, I guess I taught your training this past January. It's really cool to see like familiar faces. Oh my god, I know you already. It's so cool. Um, yeah, Morgan was our intern last Yeah. So we're, but we're glad to have everybody here. This is awesome. Um, so Sherry and I didn't meet until Crow. We grew up in office for just a couple years apart. But we now have some of the same clients together, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're going to talk about tax, kind of not versus audit, but just the differences. I know whenever I was going through uh, the recruiting, like all y'all probably already been through or are starting to go through, it's like, Ooh, audit or tax? It's like, I've never taken a class before. I don't know. And they're like, oh, based on your personality, you should like do audit. It's like that's so not helpful. But okay, like I'm an audit manager now. But like it, it, it would say based on my personality, I should do that. Yeah. So I and I think there's a little bit of truth to that. But overall, though, I think there's probably more things y'all should consider if you've already made a decision. Hopefully, this like reconfirms your decision. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what the topic's about today. I wish we had had this like when we were going through recruiting. It would have been a little more insightful. So um, yeah. You kind of just show up to your, you know, the firms and they say, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. So hopefully this will help. Yeah. So I think we already said all of this, but I don't know if this is, this is going to date me. Well, I already put what year I graduated, so it's already kind of dating me. But this was like big when I was in school was Admiral Akbar for the mascot. 
um, after Colonel Rowe. So I decided to ask him I wanted. Yeah, Sherry asked me yesterday. She was like, is anybody even going to know what that is? I was like, how long ago is that? It was over 10 years ago. But this was a suggestion that got on like ESPN. Yeah, my friend was on the commercial for ESPN. He was on ESPN for this uh, trying to get Admiral Akbar. But yeah, there was a, a few legal issues with that for some reason. <laughs> Um, so, <coughs> so we just kind of want to get a feel for the group and have some general questions. So, could you raise your hand? Like, if you're a junior, what? <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> hey, hey senior. Well, awesome. And then, any grad students? Okay, cool. So, in the, in the old Miss curriculum, with mostly seniors and graduate students in the room, that means you have all had an audit and a tax class, or you've only had one of the two senior year. You get the other one next semester. You got a vote? Junior, that's good. good. So we've got a perspective on the academic side. Let's do it. How, how many of y'all have like already tried? I've talked to some people. I've, I was trying to make my way around the room, but I've talked too much, so I just had to stop here and make it around. But um, how many of y'all have already know if you're going to audit tax? Wow, okay, cool. So hopefully like, we don't stress you out when we tell you all this and you think you made the wrong decision. Um, <laughs> you can always change. Yeah, well, absolutely. It happens all the time. Um, and then in the inverse, is anybody still deciding? I can tell you all. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay we're, we, yeah, our, we're presenting to you today. So, okay, cool. But we're going to talk a little bit about just working in general, too, at the end. So even if you have decided, I think that would be kind of helpful as well as far as, like, real world having a job. Questions that people have asked. So Sherry and I got together and I was like, what are like things that, like they should consider? Because like we were saying like it's like audit versus tax, so travel versus no travel, which is just not true. So it's more like what are things to consider? So people who've already interned, like if you were an audit, you travel a lot. Did you travel a lot? I, I went to Dallas once, and then all the other travel was like. Just like I would drive to a different client. Okay. Like every week. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, but I feel like it's not either. It's not. And, it's not right. either or. We were. Um, we were thinking about being really dirty and making a tea account. Where that it was, was like her idea. No. Sorry, me. I don't know. Yeah. So you know, put tax on it, but then we realized that it's really not like that. It's not one thing on one side and one thing on the other side. It's we really kind of figure out when you get your job is like kind of what's going on at your specific company. So that's why we just kind of listed them and we'll talk about them from our perspective versus trying to say tax does this, audit does this, tax never does this, audit, yeah. It just doesn't work that way, yeah. So the first one we kind of came up with was time spent working with teams versus individually. If you're an audit, if you've already interned or if you've already chosen audit and you're gonna intern like this spring, um, I like goob out over teamwork. I'm sure, I, if I taught your training, I totally goob out over how much I love teamwork. Um, I love working in teams, it actually gives me energy. Uh, I think kind of like knowing what you get your energy from is a very good indicator if, if you would like audit versus tax. Now I do work by myself sometimes though, um, which is good, it's a good mix, but I'm usually at a client though. So if I, if I am working with teams, we're at a client's constant interactions, different experiences every week depending on the client. Um, I would say not to stereotype, but it's very much more extroverted than it is introverted. And you're, even if you're doing work by yourself, you're probably in a room with a bunch of people, like that one big table. Yeah, it's like some people's nightmare, but yeah. Right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like for tax, I would say a lot of times you, you are on a team, but it's not like you're just kind of sitting there in your weird like, desk and not doing anything, but it's more like you have this one place that you're going to go most of the time, and then you, like you may or may not go to the client, and your amount of travel is definitely going to like what your client type is. Uh, but I think our, for tax, it's more of like you're kind of doing something, you're making something by yourself and you're getting help from people, but you're kind of working on it individually. And, that, and this is just talking about someone who just started. Yeah, sorry. And I would argue that uh, the difference in teams between audit and tax, tax teams are more narrow and uh, in, in, in vertical. So partner, senior manager, senior staff, staff, perhaps, on the same engagement. Audit teams tend to be more pyramid, right? So you've got a bigger 
broader team at the younger levels to, to get the engagement done. So you're in teams in both settings, but more vertical and in tags, a little bit broader and more purely in the market. Yeah, good way to say that for sure. So it's more like a totem pole for technical. <laughs> <laughs> um, amount of travel, kind of whatever that. I travel a decent amount. Well, during busy season, um, I love traveling. Uh, even got to do, I think we have a whole bunch of our last slides, but um, in my firm, they have these things called secondment opportunities. So I got to go live in Australia, it was in 2017. Um, like four or five months working in an office over there. That is, I, th I think that might be just specific to like the audit practice um, in our firm, but that is one of those, a lot of auditors that love signing up for that. It's just really cool travel experiences. Um, I don't know how much you travel. So I usually will go out to clients. My big clients are not in Nashville. So I would say maybe two to three times a year we'll go out to the client and actually be on the job site. and. A lot of times we'll go out at the same time as the auditor. So I've actually gone out to a client, a client with Mariana. So that's kind of cool because you're you're not going to be sit, you know, change your desk all day. You know, you're going to have opportunities to go out in the field. They're just going to be less. Um, and then I also, you know, go to recruiting events like this. I go to conferences. There's all sorts of travel opportunities. It's just. You know, it's still going to, I mean, depending on your firm, but it's going to be way more than half, I would say, going to the office. We're working from home. That's the. Yeah, and so yes, that works really well for some people, too. you got to just kind of know your preferences. It's just things to consider. Um, the degree of client interactions, uh, I'd say it, it, this is just kind of at an overarching level. Um, I think in audit, you get exposed, like, earlier on to talking to clients just because we have our interns. And our staff out there, and whenever I have like a meeting with the CFO, I usually will grab the intern or whoever is not the senior, but like the ones that like just to expose them, like, hey, this is what it's like, like to talk to a CFO. So just to kind of when what's so what's they get in that position, they can easily run a meeting. Um, but that's just they're getting in front of like the higher ups a lot sooner. I, I mean, I, I guess it's just the way audit works just makes sense. Makes the financial statement audit. You're looking to make sure everything looks right, you know, on the books. Um, which kind of leads into client perceptions. I'm sure Dr. Shaw will like this. Clients love tax accountants. Um, that's being an auditor. Can be, it, it, there can be awkward conversations sometimes or just like awkward, like just disagreements where they just don't agree with what you're saying. Because we're kind of getting paid to like find something that might not be right. Whereas Sherry and her wonderful team goes to the clients like saving them money. Um, so just as an example, um, and one of our clients last year, Sherry and I got put on the same client together. It was like December or something. And there's like several partners in the room and there's, you know, auditing, there's two tax, the two tax partners, you're in the room, I'm in the room. And CFO comes in, it's a $2 billion company, comes in. He was like, my partner, the audit partner thought, he was like, oh, he's going, he wants me. He was like, no, I want the tax people. He was like, get you, you cost me money, get out of here. Type thing, and it's like they got to save the roles again, as they usually do. Yes. So. With tax reform, it, yeah, you have become everybody's best friend, and we we work very very hard to get um, our clients tax savings, and they hopefully they will not forget that. But the the issue was that year was kind of crazy because they wanted to buy they had an airplane and they wanted to buy another seventeen million dollar airplane, but it all had to be done within the last couple weeks of the year. Um, and there's a lot of issues with that, including sales tax things that I don't quite understand. That's a different group. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was kind of neat because, like you said, he's, he's very, he was very interested in the tax group for sure. And he wanted to take us out for cigars, but I yeah. didn't <laughs> really want to. So I have to like put on charm like 110% all the time just to be like half the cool sharing <laughs> to the clients, yeah, just so they'll like give me what I need. <laughs> so that's it, it is that's a very that's something I never thought of when I went in. Um, so you are talking to clients more. You're also might be having some more awkward conversations. Just things come up, and I get that, right? So like, if someone's coming to check your work, you're gonna get a little defensive, right? Like if it's like, oh, well, that's not right. Like you don't know how busy I was that day. I forgot to you know do something, and it's like, well, that's a finding. Sorry, I get like we're, we can be annoying um, that way. So that is that is a pretty big difference, I think, at least the perceptions. Um, and then we'll take the next. Yeah, so we kind of, I wasn't exactly sure how to word it, but how much your schoolwork here um, applies to your job. And then kind of was like, oh, 
crap, like Dr. Shaw's in Like, I know, like, you can't say it doesn't apply, but that's not really what I mean. Leave the room, leave the room. Yeah, turn the camera off. No, um, I, for, <laughs> all of our tax classes really build like the foundation for what you're supposed to do. So all of the theory behind why you're doing it is going to be like super helpful for you in your job. But in the textbook are all these perfect examples of like if you get this from a client or from your client, it's going to go this way, and you're going to do this calculation according to the book, and then you'll be done. And I think maybe Morgan had a little bit of experience with that. It is like it doesn't work that way. Nothing is ever right. I don't know. Maybe Michael is he is a big client, so maybe they are perfect <laughs> when they first give them to you. But for for us, like. There's a lot of rework, there's a lot of like communication back and forth with the client um, to figure out like, okay, is this right? Um, and so that's what the theory is going to help you with is trying to figure out like, okay, I got this, but like, does it make sense? Um, and the tax research class, and I know that's why Michael is really big on uh, the tax, uh, the masters in tax, is I think that probably helps the most because you kind of figure out how to look stuff up and that's probably like at least even as a staff like part of like 30 percent of your job is figuring out how to look stuff up yeah i've got a couple of thoughts i'm, I'm a tax partner which probably just figured out and i would like to make a couple of comments there from a tax versus off perspective academic tax is more i guess applied in the workplace than academic audit. Yes. Okay, so there is a difference there. And I would also offer if you're a if you're a tax person, if you want to get tax, pay every bit of attention possible to intermediate one two, which you guys would mostly pass, advance, because the debits and credits matter. And that was the biggest revelation that I had in the public accounting was that debits and credits matter to tax. I thought it was only gonna be the Internal Revenue Code. And if you will differentiate yourselves as a tax person if you do know gap accounting very well. I mean, heck, here's an example right now. Who's an accountant in 509 right now? So <laughs> tax provision and effective tax rate calculation sitting here on the desk. All this is is debits and credits. And accounting for income taxes is one of the most difficult things that we do in tax. So I would offer that. Sherry teed up one of my favorite topics, and that's uh, choice of graduate programs. I, you know, you may get different advice from folks, but if, if you're an audit candidate, uh, you guys have a really unique opportunity here to tag on the uh, data analytics program to Mac. You know that. Uh, I spent a lot of time with the dean on the coursework with that. Highly recommend it. We're one of the few schools in the country that have it. It will differentiate you when you start working in public accounting. If you are a potential tax candidate and uh, you want, again you want to differentiate yourself, do the MST, do not do the MAC thinking you want flexibility down the road. The percentage of public accounting tax people who actually leave public accounting is very, very low. It's very different from audit. So if you start a public company tax, it's a very high likelihood you're going to remain in public accounting uh, going forward. So the MST from Ole Miss, again, especially aligned with that analytics program, is a massive differentiator. There's only two awesome MST programs in the southeast, and it's Alabama here. And uh, I strongly encourage you to do that. We, we specifically at Crow go out of our way to hire old Miss MSD candidates because of the strength of the program. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's what Sherry teed up for me. And please, uh, that's, your, that's your advice from a 25 year recruiter in public. Yeah. I'm sorry, ladies, go ahead. Oh, that's all good. So I'll just touch quickly on schoolwork for auditing. So people who have and had an audit internship. I mean, I don't remember even going in full time. I, I agree with Sherry. Nothing, I think, in our textbooks, like American school systems are not real world. Like, they, the way it's not, it's not interactive, really. It's just like it's problem based. Like, life doesn't really work that way, but it does teach you concepts. Um, I think 
overall, I agree with what you said about audit. It, when I audited cash, I was like, I don't think we learned how to do this in school. Um, maybe I just missed that day. It's also possible. I don't know. Um, but it's, uh, and, has anybody had that experience? Like, did an audit internship? You're like, what? Okay, we learned the fraud triangle. I get that. But, like, yeah, it's, it's very, like, I had a hard time when I was studying for the CPA exam and audit before I did, um, before I started working in audit. So I was trying to memorize processes and memorize concepts. And then once I actually audited, I was like, oh, this like, makes so much more sense now because I've actually done it. Um, but yeah, it's, I think the, the audit, I, whenever I took my first audit class and I'd already started to do audit, I was like, what did I, did I make a mistake? It's totally different in like the workforce um, auditing is. So I think tax might be a little more similar to actually the academic piece, more so than audit at least, if you want to compare the two. Um, we, we actually, when we learn stuff in the tax class, this, this is exactly what you will be doing at your job. You won't necessarily learn the actual mechanics, going to, how to prepare a tax return, which is going to be what you're going to be doing for like the first couple of years, is like how to actually use the software and get the numbers to be. But you should be able to understand why the numbers are in there, which I think is more important and better for your career in the future. Um, the other thing that we talked about too was just materiality is different with audit and tax. So something that Mariana will be like, I don't give a yeah, I don't care. About, <laughs> uh, like let's say with the client, I, you know, sh I'll, maybe I would ask her something like, well, why is this off by five hundred thousand dollars? And she might not care because it's our two billion dollar revenue client. But for me, five hundred thousand dollars times. 37% is a lot of money. So that's kind of another thing what Michael was talking about is understanding is you kind of, you do have to understand gap and you do have to understand things that the auditors are doing because, you know, there's lots of tax differences and honestly, like, there's things that we have to look at for, from a gap perspective that they would never look at because it's not material to them. Any questions so far? We've been rambling on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yes, um, I wanted to ask all of you, like, when you started working in public accounting, did you go right into, like, your side, like, tax uh, audit, yeah. or did you, like, switch? So I went straight into audit, and then I ended up specializing probably two years. Uh, and that is, we'll get into that, I guess, when we do that on the slide. Uh, I you specialize in industry usually not, so I'm in construction. I don't you know how I'm in construction, but I am. Um, <laughs> and insurance is too. Yeah, though, we're in the same group, actually. Yeah. The same industry. But yeah, I started like, yeah, immediately, and I haven't, like, that there, or, we're gonna cover that one of the slides, um, the opportunities to change with them. And we're not just saying crow, that should be at a lot of firms where, you know, once you have the respect, or once it's like you have proved your worth and you can do the work, you're smart, you know, smart, or obviously all y'all are smart, if you're home oh, hey, this far. Um, but then you prove your work ethic, and you have people that support you, and partners that support you, and know how, you know, how well your work is, they will, if it's a good place that you're working, you're in a good group, I can't imagine those people not being supportive of you transferring into a different business unit. So that does happen. Yes, no I, was all, I also started in tax. Yeah, I, I did as well, even though back when I did, many moons ago, that was unusual. So pre-150 hour requirements, if you start thinking back 20 years ago or whatever, almost everybody started on it. And then, possibly have an opportunity to transfer the tax if you have an interest. But now, in this day and age, with everybody being specialized, 150 hours, graduate programs being specialized, everybody's pretty much doing direct entry into all of tax. And then, you know, as Mary Ann is speaking to, there are opportunities to kind of cross paths, and, and we do have that from time to time. Has any, was anybody at a place where they still have people doing audit and tax at the same job? Like a, yeah, because like some regional, small regional, yeah. or the, you know, like auditor and tax team is the same thing. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Does that sound like it? <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, so uh, what's maybe some things that maybe you weren't expecting or threw you off whenever you actually started your full-time positions in each of your respective fields? Mm -hmm. So we've actually, yeah, we've actually got a They're so great. Experience. They're getting ahead. I love it. <laughs> from, from our very recent interns. So, um, you, I mean, I don't know if you should go ahead. Yeah, we, I can do this first. So, I, yeah, do you want to do this first? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, 
Uh, we'll give you our take too, but this is also a take from like recent um, tax yes. and interns that would surprise them. Yes. So these are all rec recent interns from the last year. Um, and I just kind of highlighted the parts that I thought might be interesting for you guys. Um, they said they got to have at least a small hand information of all the different types of tax returns. And kind of these returns, I remember in school, like we kind of learned, okay, I know what an S corporation is, you know, like an individual is, like all of that, but just actually getting in there and doing it was just completely different. Um, and then uh, helping with the pr provision, which is like kind of like a tax calculation, um, tax planning. And so all of that was like an intern. Um, and that's kind of what Michael was talking about with the team is you could, even as like an intern or staff, you may be directly working with the senior manager, like depending on what kind of client is, it is because it is very vertical um, as opposed to an audit. Um, and then digging into complex tax calculations, researching farming sources to decide how to handle transactions, working with the team here on how to handle new tax law. So like again, like this is my, my intern, this is my pet okay, like intern that I had last um, last spring because he liked to, he actually liked to do research. Um, oh that's awesome. <laughs> so huh? Yeah it is No I hate doing research. Oh my god I don't want to Yeah I mean most people want to just like hit up Google but he actually like, wanted to go into tax research so needless to say I I, I love him so mm -hmm. um, and then let's see I never knew how I could actually be useful and see a tax return through um, from start to finish. So I think like when we did, when we were in school, we did a tax return, maybe like an individual and one partnership tax return, but you know, when you're in the in the real world, you're just cranking those things out, so uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then, uh, this tax software helps you, like I was nervous since I didn't have any tax classes in tax yet, you know, as a junior, you may not have had tax classes, so it kind of helps you guide, and then, you know, everyone's gonna tell you, okay, you did this wrong, or you did this, you did this right, so. Uh, so, uh, While you're loading the slide, much more general answer for me. Public accounting is a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. It is, uh, so you will, it, and it's surprising. I, I was not prepared for it by my professors. The fact that public accounting is lots of balancing of multiple clients, multiple projects at once, much more so than school. It's exponentially more challenging to balance all that out than even, even in the academic world. And like I said, it's, it's a lot of hours, and there's sometimes weekends involved. It's, it, it, it is an awesome career. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But I, I will tell you, that caught me off guard with that. I wasn't prepared for it. Um, Y'all can read through these, and these are comments from recent audit interns. Um, and I agree with a lot of those. Like, my, I was surprised, I guess, I'm trying to think, it was like seven years ago when I started. But, um, I think project management was one of them. Um, also just really, there were so many concepts you kind of realized like how much you did learn in school. And you're like, wait, that's what they were talking about that day. It was also me studying for like the tax CPA. He says, that's what Dr. Shell is on. Like really, it all kind of comes full circle. You're like, that's why that was important. And like, I wish I would maybe pay more attention than that day. Um, but I would say really it's like Michael was saying, and that's unfortunate, right? Like it's, you know, real, world experience, I think that's why internship, no matter where you intern, anything like that is gonna be great because, you know, yeah, you have these problems, you need problems in school and all that, even if that is how the real world, even if that is how it did work in the real world, you still are dealing with people. So whether it's tax or audit, I mean, obviously you're dealing with people, but like you can, you just learn a lot about yourself and like how you react and how you respond. And I feel like it does grow a lot of character, especially, if you're not from the clients, I've had some that I've been cussed out before, and I was like, I, 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 and I'll be honest, I did nothing to deserve that. But you're like, I'm just gonna sit here and take it. Like this is so frustrating. Um, you know, it, it seems like you like you realize you're in client service, and there's so many things even outside of just like the topics of audit and tax that go into like real world. No matter what, I guess career you go into. But that was surprising to me, and also kind of figuring out who you should find as mentors at your firm or whoever, just things like that, where you don't even think about. What do I want to do on down the road? I, and I was thinking, I wonder if I was telling you this show earlier, but I was, no, I was telling you, I'm sorry, with my mom. I was like, my mom was an I was like, wait, yeah, same person. Um, but I, I'm really bad about like, I think this is what makes 
this is where I struggle. Um, being a manager, I really have to work probably harder than a typical manager, whether it's tax or audit, same thing with project managing. I am so bad, my brain usually thinks no more than probably a week into the future, naturally. And I'm like, I, and you know, an event will come up or something will be like, oh yeah, you're gonna be up with this brain? I'm like, I'm already made other plans. And what if I don't wanna do any of that? You know, like, what if I still wanna sit at home tonight? I'm really bad about that. So whenever I got into like the, you know, into this job, I didn't have like really much foresight about what I wanted to turn into. Um, I think that is something that I would just encourage y'all, not audit or tax, just in general. Whenever you go and you're starting full time, find mentors, um, people you can bounce ideas off of. Um, some of my mentors aren't even in audit, they're in risk or tax. Um, so I would encourage that, because that's just something like where you're like, okay, there's like these real world scenarios and problems that I don't know if anybody else ever encountered, but if you have people you can lean on, it's not just like your audit team, I feel like that can kind of help those surprises not be quite as bad. But I do have more of this now. I realize the importance of me a little more into the future. Um, so let's see, do you want to go back to the tax slide? Any yeah. questions? I'll make oh, sure yeah, sorry. cover that. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how you said that there's less, like, I guess, turnover in the tax and Good question. So what I was trying to articulate, and I don't think I did a, a great job with it. So historically, there's a reputation that for auditors, uh, starting public, uh, public accounting as an auditor, get your CPA license, maybe make manager, then go to industry and try to get a CFO. That's been the case for decades, right? But that's just the reputation of audit. Obviously, some folks stay in audit for their entire careers. They make management director, they make partner, they have you know long life, you know, long lived careers in public. But traditionally, a lot of folks are, are entering public accounting uh, audit, thinking that there's a, a CFO path in front of them that they're going to chase. In tax, there are much less, well, there are much less opportunities for tax in in private as we call it. Private could be a private corporation, could be a public company still as well. But there's just less tax folks in the finance function of, uh, of companies. And so I think that that leads to more tax people being in tax and public accounting for their entire careers. That, that's what I was trying to get to. And, uh, but, it, Again, I think everybody's got their own opportunities, and one of our best tax people is now the CFO of one of our clients. Doesn't happen very often. You know, I'm not qualified to be a CFO. I've been a tax guy for 25 years. I, I honestly don't have the right background, so I couldn't do it. But uh, you know, if you've got the right academic background and you've got the right job opportunities, you can see tax people move into into those functions just much. It, it happens much less often. Yeah, a lot of our audit people that have left in my office are actually now like clients. And for tax, it's really not the case. But like going off of what Michael said is, you know, a lot, even a really big company can still not have a tax director. So they're kind of big, like we have clients with maybe a billion dollars revenue that don't have a tax director that are still being serviced by us. So that is part of the explanation of why you were saying there was less jobs out there, at least like in, in our industry and what I've seen. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a great question. That was curious what too. I was like, is that what stats? Are you talking about? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, saw some other hands go yeah. up. Okay. I had a quick question. Uh, what are some common threads between uh, audit and tax that you guys can speak to? I think this one up here. I mentioned to you that it was similar to what was on mine, is being able to see your work product from beginning to end was really cool, because you, like, I think a lot of us have a sense of like accomplishment at the end of the day, and it's like, wow, I really worked hard, but like I was part of a team, and I, I was, like, was able to do this and help our client. So do you mean like, let me make sure, are you saying like, I guess similarities between audit and tax, right. or just the oh. experience of working Just, just general similarities yeah. or experience. I think we have some stuff at the end. I'm going to shut the slide deck off. We're going to keep trying to go to yeah. it. <laughs> we, we really just want to take yeah. questions, really, with our time that I've got. So, 
because I, I yeah, think that's a good that, question. Yeah, you might need one. No, but go ahead. I don't, have, I don't have an answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yeah, you're, you're, you'd be great for that. <laughs> I mean, I mentioned one of the most significant commonalities earlier, and it sounds very, very academic and tactical, but the whole concentration on gap and the fact that you've got to move that spreads on both sides is sometimes over, overlooked. I, I guess I could tell my joke right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> The tax people tend to make fun of audit people from time to time, and so one of the ways we do that is we ask what GAP stands for. So GAP really stands for not generally accepted accounting principles. It stands for go away audit people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> never working on a client. That's awesome. <laughs> so you're never going to hear me telling you jokes because my jokes are terrible. But we, we, do, uh, we do make fun of each other. You are a dad. You have a daughter on that sounds good dad joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Teamwork is something that we all enjoy doing, and especially like when I said, you know, I'll go out to a client in Booth and Marianne, and a lot of times, like, I might be the only person there, or, you know, um, I'll bring one other person, but man, it's just kind of cool to be sitting around, and like, obviously, you're working really hard, but it's kind of fun to be like, kind of just. Yeah, like we won't, we're working together in St. Louis next week, and I'm like, we're not getting anything done. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably gonna be bad. Yeah, I should probably go for three days instead of two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, any other questions right now? Is it all? Um, while you guys are thinking, because I, I know we're running out of time here, if I can see the clock correctly behind the screen, I, I would, I would suggest. To one thing that those of you have met me before or have probably heard me say this too many times. Listen to your professors when they tell you to prioritize the CPA exam very highly in your lives. Uh, I know in the, in the MAC and the MST program here, you guys have Becker built in, so you have no excuse for not being completely prepared to take the exam. If you are a recruit uh, a pro, out of you the MST or MAC program here, our expectation is that you will show up with all sections of the exam passed. So if you graduate in May and you start in the typical fall time frame that you would in October, we're going to expect you to show up done. And that's because we know you can do it. Not only the academic preparation here, but the way it's baked in the master's program. The folks that show up in public account without the exam passed or without being partially along in sections and heavily prioritizing that struggle. And I, I'm sure you've heard it before. I'm going to overemphasize it to you again. Just more free advice from someone who's been around a long time. It, it's just hard to do both. It, it seems like it's hard to probably go to that group and sit for sections during, during the MAC and the MST. I understand that. But you layer on real life work and then even study for sections of the exam it please make that a takeaway shut we we've actually had some of our best employees defer their start dates so typical may graduation in your guys's program and traditionally that would be in october to start we've had many of our top performers say you know what can we can i just show up january first I need that extra couple of months, but when I show up on January 1st, I'm going to be done. And they made that may all. And it's, it's one of the best decisions they make to forego a couple of months of income. They didn't forego in March because they still got the whole first busy season in as a full time employee. So it, it's a great option to consider is the deferred start date to make sure you get the exam done. Well, they're going to make up the lost income from the bonus anyway. In the CPA exam. Yeah, I'm sure most yeah, firms, I can't imagine any firms, the big ones not giving a bonus. I was the really bad uh, new hire who didn't take your advice. I didn't know you yet. Had I, I would have done it. Um, I traveled that summer. I was like, oh, like, what are you going to need? Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do this. I brought my books with me. I never opened them. It was for a month or two. I can't remember um, how long it was. My mom was like, I'm telling you, Mariana. I was like, well, I'm never going to get to travel again, which is a lie. In public accounting, I think most firms are going to get four to five weeks of vacation. Um, 
So yeah, like so to your point, because that people preach that and I was like, whatever, I can do it. And I finally <laughs> did pass, but like it, you know, my first year um, at, at Crow, I think I passed within eleven and a half months of starting. Like the twelve is like they give you a bonus in twelve months. I was like, girls. So but that first eleven and a half months, I will say my evaluations like for work struggled. Um, there were people that had started my start class, they'd already gotten it done, or they just weren't even studying at all. And I'd already, I actually, I passed one section through the program here, so at least I had one. Okay, it's like, don't write me off just yet. We're gonna work together. Um, but uh, I had to pass three, and it was. I mean, I, I made it a priority because I was like, you know what? Like, if this didn't work out of this firm, it, it, it did. But I was like, I'd rather have my CPA because I already had the clock ticking because I already passed one. You know, it was February of from that, you know, grad school, and this is, we're like in October at this point, it's like, oh my, oh my God, a year, or I guess a little over a year left, or no, a little less than a year, it's 18 months total, and so um, I passed the last one in the very last window possible, open, but without far falling off, I was like, if I lose far, I'm just gonna quit, <laughs> I'm gonna quit counting, I'm gonna quit, like, it, and so it was, it, but I struggled though, and my evaluation struggled, um, I couldn't, I couldn't really 100% get it to both, um, and I had to kind of catch up at work to get promoted on time, and it all worked out. But I look back, and I guess like you know, you look back, and I'm like, oh, what about that? It, it, it was, it, it wasn't fun at all. And I, so I had to take vacation to study, and I kind of did that to myself. Yeah. So yeah, we. I mean, you would have to get ready to take vacation in order to study. So use up, yeah, use up your vacation time to sit. sit Don't go like travel over the summer. I mean, do if you need to do that. But like, I just want to remember. Well, the other thing would be. It, the person who asked the question earlier about the school or translating to the workforce or, or what the real life work is, you always have to remember the CPA exam is a book test. It's a passable test, it's a fair test, but it's so much based on what you're doing in the classroom. It is absolutely not based whatsoever on what you actually do in the real world. It, it's a book test. So the closer you are to being in the classroom, really, really will benefit you. Yeah. So let's say I didn't have this conversation. I went to like the uh -huh. wrong For sure. service line. Uh, I went to the city state or something. So what are like the reconciliations? Like what, what's the step I could go through to get into that right you know, area for me within Crow or the other firms in general? Like to oh, versus audit or tax. Right, let's say I got intern and audit, maybe oh. full-time audit. Oh, I realized yeah. that wasn't for me, so I yeah. didn't want to be tax or something. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it's going to depend on the firm you're at. Yeah. Um, I do feel like, I think what works for my personality, I'm so not a typical accounting personality. And when everybody says that, I'm like, I'll take this compliment, thank you. And, you know, I think the way this, the way Crow works well for me, I'm not trying to like promote for her, it's just, it's really, going to be wherever you are. I know that like the partners I work for, the managers I work for, it is all, I feel like it's a, it's, I think because Crow's not before, it's not highly structured. And so because of that, it's a lot easier to move in between. So like, if I wanted to change, you know, positions at Crow, I already would know who to talk just because you develop those relationships. But I think the protocol, it's going to depend on if there's a budget for it, if there's a need for it. Um, I would think if you're going to be in a billable position like risk, cons you know, consulting, tax, or audit, like yes, we could definitely use your help. If it's like a, I don't know, like a recruiting or something, it's like going to be a bit harder. But yeah, if you're wanting to transition to something like that, That's right. I think that yeah, client service to client service is easy depending on different functional lines. It's and, and, and you know, I, I would offer to you a capitalist answer. All public county firms are partnerships. If we have a very talented individual as partners, we want them to be operating in their personal best space. So if there's an interest in a different functional area, we absolutely want to support the change because we make more money. You're happy. The clients are happy. So I would say pretty much universally in public accounting, there is a lot of support to transfer between functional lines for talented individuals. And the, the only limitation of that sometimes is the size of the office. It, 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 I will be honest, with you, if you're a small practice office, and I'm gonna define small as, if your audit department or your tax department is less than 25 people maybe in your particular geographic location, that makes it a little bit tougher to match the needs of. But again, for talented individuals, we typically make it 
So I hope you don't ever food. feel stuck. Hopefully you don't feel stuck in whatever yep. whatever firm yeah. you're at. And I will say, like, when I meet younger people, like the staff or senior staff, when you ask them, you know, I would say maybe 20 or 30 percent of the time they'll say, "Oh, I did an audit internship. I didn't like it, so I did tax." So it's it's We're not a person. Yeah. We but, never, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's it's not unusual at all, especially for the younger level. I mean, they you know they need a ton of people, kind of like what Marianne said. Like you need a lot of people at the at the bottom to do some of this work. So it, it's it is fairly easy, yeah. other than like maybe your office size. Um, but if you're willing to move, that that also you know could be an opportunity. Yeah. All right. So you guys are managers. I'm a senior manager. You're a senior manager. I'm just a regular manager. Okay. Land manager. Yeah. So I know they got a part of the So for like people that are like looking into the government and the public accounting, like what's one of the best like foundations or tips that you can give to somebody that's just looking to move up in the ranks? Oh, that's a great question. What, what do you say, moving under the to like move up? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 People are like thinking about like uh, saying like public accounting or like, moving up with like, like what would be like some of the best foundations and tips that you can give to somebody. Um, communication, I think that was, I had actually asked some of my um, seniors that as, as well before this uh, meeting is making sure to communicate like what you don't understand and like what your schedule is as far as doing the work. Um, I think the big thing that uh, was a misunderstanding was people wanting to say yes to everything and not meeting their expectations. when. It is 1,000% better to raise your hand and say that you need help versus just not doing something. Well, saying so, yes to everything and have like mediocre work on everything you do. Yeah. And then you're going to make people mad. Right. So you're kind of like afraid to make someone mad on the front end, but then you have really kind of, they're way more pissed off at the end if you don't deliver what you're saying. So I think asking questions and communicating was one of the top things that was said as far as things I wish I knew that would have helped me in my career. Because we understand like when you come to work with the company, you, you've been to class, but you don't really know how to do anything. You don't know how to use the software. You don't understand necessarily how to do the tax return or how to yeah, I would never have that expectation. That would <laughs> so be so unfair. People, yeah. I guess, are a little bit scared of maybe, I don't know if it's like sounding. I just want to make a good impression. I yeah. Yeah. So that, I think that's kind of like the biggest thing is just asking for help because that's literally what we're here for. The, there's a guy I work with who just got promoted to senior staff and I feel like we kind of have like a reverse mentorship. We talk, I guess it's like the last Friday of like every month and so we catch up and it's, it's virtually well like where I mean it's unofficial I guess like coach already has on the system I guess they assign you but it's just you know you build those relationships you get to know people and so Something that I, and I was not, this is not my personality, I didn't go out of my way to ask for extra, not that I didn't, I, I wanted to do really good work, but I didn't, I didn't ask for like scary opportunities. Because that's just not who I am, it's like I kind of, I want to play safe. And this guy's name's Austin, um, he's, he's great. He, he's probably a great candidate for getting promoted early to manager, to hopefully answer your question. He asked like for those extra responsibilities, and not like to, open, not to make his workload worse, but he wants to like go talk to the CFO, he wants to, Calculate materiality for the audit when he's just a staff, like things like that. And when he asks me if he can do it, I'm like, oh, 100%, you can do all this work. You know, like, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like, let's manage our schedule, let's make sure this makes sense. You know, I don't, we don't want him to quit. But he asked for those things. And I feel like I've learned from that where I'm like, wow, I wish I'd been more that way. Just to take on opportunities and challenges and being a paper failure. And, and just asking questions in general. Yeah. Like, why, why, it's going to be really impressive if you ask that in an annoying way, you don't come up to your manager, like, you're really like, 30 minutes and ask why, but like kind of ask questions like, oh, I noticed like we did this, like can you explain more? It's, it's, I think that's more impressive than just being like, oh, I, I copied last year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I think would say the, what I've seen over the years has been very successful for fast growth in public accounting. I uh, maybe can get down to a couple of different items here. A continuous appetite for learning. Folks that come into public accounting with that mentality, they're doing extra reading on the side, maybe on a new FASB pronouncement, or maybe a new tax uh, ruling. They tend to move up very quickly in public accounting. Strategic adaptability. And, you know, this profession is ever changing. The industries that we work with our clients in are ever changing. You can't be stagnant. You've got to be able to hit it quickly. 
And you know, those are a couple of things that I've seen be very beneficial to fast career growth. Because in public accounting, you're not lockstep with your peers and your promotions and raises. It, it absolutely <coughs> is performance-based and individual performance-based. So those that take on the, the extra opportunities to learn and, and that are able to, to shift focus or pivot tend to do really well. Sticks out, too. I think, are we, is it supposed to end at 7, at 6.50? It's up to Allison. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just, I don't, I know people have things, we can take more we can questions. We take questions all night. Yeah, keep going. I'm on my health post up and talk to y'all all night. Do you all have any more questions? Or, I mean, we can, I just didn't, if y'all need to go ahead and get out, but we'll be here and we can answer your questions if anybody wants to ask them afterwards. I just think it's supposed to end at, like, at 6.50. 6 yeah. minutes after 6.50. Any more questions? Respect y'all's time. Okay, Feel free to use this if you have anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll hang out here for and, a little yeah. bit. If you want to ask us questions, you don't want to ask in front of the group. We'll, we'll stick around for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for y'all's attention. This is awesome. Y'all are in a great program. And it just keeps going. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, oh okay. We have, we have Please don't take a free mug. So we have these, um, I guess they're insulated mugs. I know we said they're pretty much some of my team here. But, um... And they have a straw. Please grab them on the way out. You don't want to carry them. Yeah, you kind of carry that out. Please take some. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank y'all for coming. Um, just a quick reminder: we still have spots open for the pantry tomorrow and Thursday. So please give one of Dr. Shaw if you uh, are willing to work those. And have a good night. Thank you.